Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and today I want to take you for a quick garden tour around my secret garden. But if we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So here it is August and this is what my black-eyed Susan portion of the garden looks like. And these guys are terrific reseeders. They wind up uh, forming seed in fall. I never deadhead these back because I want to make sure that those beautiful seeds uh, stay on the plant. And then eventually towards the end of fall, they wind up dropping off the plant and they kind of like bury themselves a little bit in the dirt and they wind up giving me fresh plants, like additional plants the following year. And so I love, love, love this flower. And I have to say this limelight hydrangea is another one of my absolute favorites. I've got two of them bumped up back to back. Uh, this is kind of like the younger version and this is uh, the older version. So I think this one might be about 15 years old. This one's probably about maybe just five years old, but it's the same plant. And this is a super easy hydrangea to grow in your garden. So if you're new to the hydrangea game, I recommend planting a limelight hydrangea. They also have a smaller version of the limelight hydrangea and it's called Little Lime. And it's also like a, like a compact version. I think it only grows maybe two or three feet. It's from Proven Winners, so it's for smaller gardens. And it's just really easy. Once this plant gets established in your garden, it's really like no maintenance. So I don't even prune this flower back or the shrub back. I leave it alone. Mother Nature takes care of the watering and it starts off with these beautiful white blossoms. And then eventually in the fall, it's going to turn to more of this like green pinkish stage and it's going to turn into a beautiful dried cut flower. So let me show you who else is back here. A lot of times I've taken you on tours of the front of the garden, but I want to start showing you also the back of my garden. So these were some daylilies. And there's a way to keep daylilies coming back all season long. If you wind up cutting out the seed pods that are on them, they're usually on these little stems. If you can cut off the seed pods that were on here uh, before they go to seed, it'll continue to give you beautiful, beautiful blooms. However, if you make the mistake that I made and you kind of leave them alone and you don't take those seed pods out, once those seeds get mature, it's a signal to the plant that it's done flowering for the season. And so it stops producing flowers. So if you kind of leave them alone, they're going to go, you know, dormant faster. But if you can keep up on like those big seed pods that start to form, cutting them out, uh, then you're going to wind up having those yellow flowers all season long. Back here is one of my favorite flowering trees. This is called a crepe myrtle. This one happens to be pink. It's absolutely beautiful. I adore these as far as uh, planting flowering trees in my garden and in my landscaping, but know that they get really, really, really large. And um, I don't like to use these in my fresh cut flower arrangements because even though they're beautiful, these pink little blossoms wind up falling off uh, the stem really quickly once you bring them inside. So they look gorgeous. Uh, but I don't love them as a fresh cut flower because they're very delicate and they wind up like, you know, like getting all over the counter. So enjoy them on the plant. And these blooms are going to stay in place. I think I usually have these blooms, I don't know, maybe for like six or seven, maybe even eight weeks. They're a really long lasting bloom on the plant and they come in all different colors. So I'm going to show you what some of my crepe myrtle looks like in the back of my garden right now because I've got some purples back there and an even larger pink one. But I'll show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so we're going to take a walk through the secret garden. And this is just a whole bunch of tall grasses that I have back here. This is the back of that giant limelight hydrangea I showed you before. And then I've got a pot with these beautiful petunias. Sheldon's great. He, he plants all of my flowers in the pots. And this is marigolds. Marigolds will kind of keep the rodents out of your garden. So if you want to plant them down low, a lot of times that deters the rodents from coming. And here I have a beautiful pinky winky hydrangea. And I've got some echinacea. And this is a great reseeder also, just like the black eyed Susans. And then here's that purple crepe myrtle I told you about. And then the back of the garden, you can tell like this giant wall of pink. Isn't that spectacular? And that's right in back of another giant limelight hydrangea. So those are like the big characters back here. Let me show you some of the uh, smaller friends that we have. 
These are more of my mop head hydrangeas. And guess what? I got no blooms this year, guys, just like a lot of you. So we had a very hot winter, like a very warm winter. And then we had cold snaps in the spring. And so it froze off the bulk of my blooms. So this is what some of my mop head hydrangeas look like. I'm not worried about it because I know that next year, uh, hopefully I'm going to have a better year, but sometimes it just is what it is. And so this is another one of my limelight hydrangeas. You can tell how heavy some of these beautiful, colossal uh, blooms get. And you can tell it's kind of like drooping. So what happens is I try not to prune back uh, my hydrangeas, most of my hydrangeas, especially my limelights, because when you trim them back, you get colossal flower heads the following year. But a lot of times they wind up doing this droopy thing. So a way to prevent that from happening is to just leave them alone and don't prune them back. And then you're going to wind up getting blooms uh, that are closer to this size for the bulk of the plant. But for some reason, I don't know, I wound up pruning back this one last year. I think it just it needed like a, like a recharge. So if your hydrangeas aren't blooming that much, sometimes I'll give them like a little bit of a recharge during pruning season. And um, it depends on which hydrangea that you have to know the correct pruning season. So if you're not sure which hydrangea you have, the best bet is just to leave it alone and don't prune it back at all because sometimes you can cut off next season's flowers. And then over here, we've got some beautiful shrub roses. These are super beautiful. I also have a rose garden in the front of my house. So I want to show you these shrub roses first. They're super pretty. I love the color on these. They're so pretty. They're just like a really happy, happy color. And we've got a trellis over here and we're growing some grapes on here. So we're trying to feel out this grape season. See what that's all about. Once again, another shot of the crepe myrtle that big giant wall of flowers back there. And then we've got some more hydrangeas. These are all from Proven Winners. I'm hoping for some blooms from these in late, late summer. You could tell a rodent got the better of this sunflower. And then I've got a whole bunch of limelight hydrangeas that we, we replanted in this back garden last year. These guys were almost dead about three years ago, four years ago. They were uh, planted back by my woods and they just were, weren't getting enough sunshine. So we took them out in the fall. We made sure we had at least six weeks before the ground froze so that they had a chance to get established. And now they're doing phenomenal. They look really great. And we did the same thing with the viburnum that's in back of it. That's that bush that's in back of it. They were also almost dead a few years ago. So we had to remove them and you know replant them. So if you're going to wind up moving some of your plants around, if they're not happy, fall is a great time to do that. But just make sure that you give them at least six weeks before the ground freezes so that their roots can get happy. And then this is what uh, the bulk of the garden looks like here. And then I've got a whole bunch of Annabelle hydrangeas over here. These turn to a beautiful green this time of year. And uh, similar with that giant limelight hydrangea that you saw. I pruned this plant back last year, which I usually don't do, but I wasn't getting a lot of blooms, but I got these super colossal giant flower heads when I did that. Uh, so next year, I'm going to make sure that I don't prune it so I have smaller flower heads and it has more of like a wooden structure like this. It's going to be a little bit taller. And that wooden structure from like this year's stems are going to wind up holding up next year's blooms. And then here's the golf cart. This is what it looks like from far, from like the side yard. And this is just like a view of the garden as you're walking into the back. You see Lucy's here. Where is she? Here she is. Hello. And then back here, I've got a whole bunch of peonies that I planted in back of these smooth hydrangeas. And the reason why I planted them in back of them is because these peonies are one of the first flowers to come up in early spring. So I have gorgeous peony flowers. And then once they die out, these guys start coming up. So it's almost like a little bit of a, like a secession planting garden. So I've always got like a pop of color back here, but I made sure that I have enough spacing between these two plants that they're not overpowering each other. And you'll notice that these, you know, are looking kind of crummy. I need to cut these stems uh, back down. I'm going to cut this plant back down to about maybe about two or three inches, but I do like to leave the, uh, the leaves on when there's some green left on them uh, for a while because the plant has to feed itself throughout the season. These guys really should have been cut back though because they look a little bit diseased. So I need to cut, cut those back. This is a better example of like a healthy peony uh, in August that has the healthy leaves, has a little bit of 
that mildew on it, but uh, um, that's okay because they're still looking green and they're not that diseased like this guy, but this guy should really be cut back. This one I'm also going to cut back towards the end of fall. And um, yeah, so this is what the garden looks like when you kind of walk back here. I also have some beautiful rows of Sharon's. This is also a profuse spreader. So this is going to wind up replanting itself all over your garden. And they're beautiful, but they can take over the garden. And so yeah, so let me give you like the slow little wrap around. This is a plant that I'm trying to revive from, it was almost completely dead because I didn't water it when we were away. And it was like a huge, you know, wave of heat and it just totally dried out, but we're trying to get it back to life. Right now I have it soaking in some water because it got root bound and those roots just wrapped around the plant and I won't let it absorb any water. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna make you a video showing you how I brought that plant back from almost death. All right, but this is what this beautiful garden looks like this time of year. And one last thing I wanna show you, actually two last things I wanna show you. These are milkweed. This is another profuse reseeder. And inside here are all of the little tiny seeds that are gonna wind up giving me new milkweed plants. They're gonna kind of drop in here, reseed themselves. And this is a great plant to have in your garden. And then here's the front end of that crepe myrtle that I showed you before. Do a little zoom. A little limelight, like a younger limelight next to it. A big mop head. I got a couple blooms from this guy this year, which was nice. Even though we had those crazy temperature swings. And then here's my butterfly bush. This is also a great plant to have in your garden. It does get super large though, uh, but it is drought tolerant and it comes in a, a spectacular array of colors. And it's just like a really beautiful, beautiful plant. And what I do is I deadhead this as much as I can because the more I deadhead it during the season, the more flowers that I get, and this will bloom all the way through the first frost. And then here's just another gigundo limelight hydrangea that I have back here. Mother plant and then the little baby plant next to it. So this guy's gonna have to be moved because the mother plant is casting too much shade on it. Uh, so probably in fall, I'm gonna dig the baby one up and move it someplace where it's gonna be happier and then it can get as large as the mother plant. All right, and uh, that's it for today's garden tour, guys. Thank you so much for joining us in this video and please say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. You can also find us on TikTok and I made a whole bunch of podcasts for you. You can find those wherever you listen to your podcast and know that I made a whole bunch of online flower courses for you with easy to follow tips on how to grow beautiful flowers just like these in your own garden. I will put all of those in descriptions below and please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. Also check out our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there. And know that YouTube has allowed me to have a super thanks uh, button attached to this channel. And if you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee or I'll let us know if you appreciate these videos, uh, that would be terrific. Or you could just give us a like or a comment below. I would appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.